what's up everybody welcome back to another video from exotic astrology and someone told me to make a video on this that is why i am finally making it and if you're new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you like this video then click thumbs up and share it with everybody that you know so today's topic is how much to reveal when you give a consultation to somebody well one day i made a video recently with the name astrologer's paradox if you have not watched it then please go and watch otherwise you will not understand what i am saying basically astrologer's paradox means that whenever a client approaches you for consultation he or she expects that you tell whatever is about to happen but at the same time <laughs> <laughs> if you directly say that this negative incident will happen that affects them psychologically and if you do not tell then after the negative event happens they will come to you and they will blast on you that why did you not tell me so what to do now should you tell or should you not how much to tell how much not to tell well these are some very important crucial questions which many astrologers have and depending on their own experience and own perception of what is to be told and what is not to be told they will make the decision and depending on the client and depending on the age of the client but that is a subjective matter person to person but what i am going to say here is some general principles that i follow personally for example it depends on the situation of the person who is asking if the person is searching for a job and i see that for coming 2 3 years there is no opportunity to get into somewhere then i would say that for the next 2 years you have to struggle and then after 2 years you will get a job but then again if it is not 2 years and if the struggle is for the next 10 years then it is better that i tell him that you will have a long time long term struggle and things can get difficult because then the person has to do some other planning what planning he can do that will depend on the horoscope i am not going into that but suppose there is a small time for example 6 months or 1 year or 2 year that he is not going to get a job so i do not tell him that you will not get i said i will tell him that you can keep trying you may get but if it is a very long time then i don't keep him in darkness now if he is a man then probably this would be my approach and generally men will approach for career related issues and women will approach for relationship or marriage related issues now we need to be very careful with women because women are very sensitive by nature and then we say something which impacts them psychologically very badly therefore for example if a woman comes to me and asks first of all what i would do is i would check where is her moon placed in her own horoscope that is irrespective of what time period or dasha or transit which is running that's the first step check if moon is having any link with jupiter because whenever jupiter is involved with moon when i say jupiter is involved i mean to say if jupiter is aspecting the moon or sitting with moon jupiter aspects the 5th 7th and 9th house from wherever it sits so the probability that the person will have moon linked with jupiter is 1/3 because jupiter will sit in one place and then there are three aspects 
that means four houses are covered so if moon is impacted by jupiter in either of the four ways then and then again it depends on which sign also it is and then if that is the case if jupiter's positive aspect or conjunction is there then probably i will reveal certain things to her which i would have not revealed otherwise and especially if moon is in a water sign for a lady we need to be very careful while predicting something because water signs are by nature very emotional especially if moon is debilitated you need to be very 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 careful about predicting something to somebody negative basically or if moon is in the eighth house be very careful with what you say best is not to tell them anything because they cannot handle it i have seen it in my case in my case i mean in cases of examples of women who i have done consultations either you call them girls or women or whatever irrespective of their age they cannot handle it they simply cannot handle it another problem comes when moon is associated with rahu because rahu keeps the mind in illusion it's a very difficult combination to have in somebody's chart moon rahu conjunction then you have to see what is the situation of the moon for example if moon rahu conjunction is happening and jupiter is aspecting or moon is in a good house like fifth house or ninth house or fourth house then to some extent you can reveal certain things or if moon is very badly damaged suppose moon is with rahu in scorpio or in a sign like capricorn especially because capricorn is the sign of tension <laughs> many people do not know this but capricorn represents work and when you are working what happens your intention this work has to be done 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 and also because it is the own sign of saturn then the traits of saturn come into moon because moon gets clouded by the sign where it sits that means if moon is with rahu and very badly placed suppose it is in scorpio moon rahu conjunction in scorpio or in capricorn or this is happening in the 8th house because 8th house is the house where moon dies that is called marana karak sthan for moon dies does not mean uh, the moon dies but the significations of moon which uh, refers to the mental peace happiness the ability to feel nourished or to nourish others that is in doldrums when moon is in the 8th house and another problem occurs when moon is with ketu because ketu and moon conjunction people i have seen they their thoughts and their actions are very weird and sometimes they themselves do not understand why did i do so because ketu represents confusion because ketu does not have the head the problem is rahu has uh, rahu has only the head so rahu only wants 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 rahu knows everything i want this i want that but ketu doesn't know what what it wants because it doesn't have the head because of that they are very much unclear of what they want moon rahu is like i want everything i want 10 girls i want all the girls in this world but moon ketu is like i don't know what i want <laughs> i want a boy or a girl or a or maybe i want both <laughs> who knows these days i'm not talking of relationships here but in general i'm saying and apart from that if moon is with saturn because that is known as vish yoga in astrology vish yoga means it is like milk which is touched by a serpent because saturn represents what saturn represents reality what lord krishna says in the gita dukhalaya mashashvatam that this material world is a place of misery that is what saturn represents in essence in short so 
when moon is with Saturn or aspected by Saturn, then irrespective of whatever happens in the person's life, there is a tendency, a strong tendency in the person if it is not impacted by Jupiter, the moon, if it is only impacted by Saturn, by conjunction with Saturn or aspect and it is devoid of any link with Jupiter, then the person's default nature is to think low about himself or herself. And because see Saturn is downward facing and Jupiter is upward facing. Upward facing means it always tries to see ahead the positive things in life and Saturn will always try to see the negative things. Then what happens? Even if you say 10 good things to the girl and you say one bad thing, she will only take that. I have seen this again and again and again and again. Moon and Saturn. You say thousand good things, one bad thing you say, they will hang on to that. They will stick to that. And they will get so much bogged up that they will be like, that's it. So these are the different possibilities which can come up. And especially if moon is well placed, suppose it is in good houses like Kendra's, 1st, 4th, 7th, 10th or it is in 3 corners, 5th house, ninth house and it is in a decent sign. Decent sign means either it is in Cancer or it is in Pisces or it is in Sagittarius or it is in Aries. Then depending on the whole, the situation of the horoscope, you can make some difficult predictions. Otherwise, if moon is in signs like Scorpio or Capricorn and even up to the sign of Aquarius, especially Scorpio or moon in the 8th house, be very careful. Best is not to say anything. Or if moon and, moon and Saturn are sitting together, then forget it. Simply keep your mouth quiet. Otherwise, they can go up to the point of suicide also, I have seen. After getting negative predictions from astrologers, there are cases which has happened. And when I am saying this, I am not saying personally about any person who has Saturn moon conjunction. But somehow this is the default norm. As I said, if moon is devoid of benefic aspects of Jupiter. Because... The person is destined to undergo some sort of suffering or misery related to emotions when moon is linked with Saturn. Because Saturn represents the karmic backlog, the negative things that we have done. They say Saturn is a planet of karma, but the fact of the matter is it is a significator of our sins. Wherever we have committed sins, whichever area, because it represents dirt, Saturn is the significator of dirt. So whenever Saturn is linked with moon, it simply means that the mind, the emotions, the what is the mind basically? The mind is the way by which we perceive this world. Consciousness is expressed through the mind. Consciousness which, which is pure chitta, the spirit, the soul, that gets expressed through the mind. Means the soul will perceive things through the mind. And now we also have to check the position of sun in a man's horoscope. Sun should be in a relatively good dignity to give predictions. Also you have to check moon. I am not saying you do not check moon for men. And also for women also you have to check the placement of sun. And the another planet that you have to check is the placement of the Lagna Lord, the Ascendant Lord, the ruler of the Ascendant, ruler of the first house. Because that will also give you an indication of how difficult situations, how he takes, how he or she will react to difficult situations in life. 
For example, if Lagna Lord is exalted or it is well placed in Kendra or Trikon or in a friend sign, then it is seen that whatever challenges come in the path, he has the power to overcome them. And if you see moon is well placed and the Lagna Lord is badly placed, do not make a negative prediction. Because the person, although emotionally it will not affect him, but he will still end up taking it in a wrong way. And now you will say, somewhere I will see sun is bad, somewhere moon is bad, somewhere the Lagna Lord is bad. Then what to do? Should we not make any negative predictions? Well, no, that's what I said in the beginning. It will depend on the individual horoscope. For example, if I see in a horoscope, all the three are spoiled. <laughs> sun, moon and the Lord of the Ascendant. Uh, well, then that's a precarious state. Then we have to refrain from giving any negative predictions probably. Because at the end of the day, when the person comes to an astrologer, he feels helpless. That is why he comes. Otherwise, nobody will come to you or me. <laughs> so it is our duty that when the person leaves the room or when he goes out of the car, consultation zone of the astrologer he should get some direction in life he should get some positivity and the most important thing you should do is give direction to the person along with the remedies of course by direction i mean that you have to tell him that these these are the problems again depending on the other things which i said now, how much you will tell, that will also depend. But I am saying, suppose you decide, okay, now these, these are the things which I will tell. Then you tell those and then you give the solutions. For example, if you see that a person's Venus Mahadasha time period is going to start for 20 years. And then he has 5 years left. Because... Before Venus, Ketu Mahadasha will be there. I will discuss the series of Dashas later and what Dasha is later. But if some of you know what Dasha is, the Dashas are time periods where one particular planet is becomes the most prominent planet. Now, before Venus Mahadasha starts, which is for 20 years, you have Ketu Mahadasha, which is for roughly 7 years. Suppose a client comes to you at the third year of Ketu Mahadasha. And suppose he is at the age of 18. Uh, not 18, suppose he is the age of 25. Then when he turns 30, his Venus Mahadasha will start. Then what you have to do? If you see that Venus is very badly spoiled in the horoscope, it's very terrible. Suppose I am saying, then you can tell that to him now because he has five years to work on it. Remember what I said in the karma, in the video of karma. If you have not watched it, then please go and watch that. There is something called as Kriyamana karma, which you do in this life and then you get results. That means if the person has a long time for a difficult time to begin then you can say that to him don't say that you will have bad time you say that this time can be a bit difficult if you do not do this remedy tell him like this then he will take you seriously otherwise if you tell that oh this time is very bad you, you can do some remedies maybe things will improve then he will be like uh, leave it it's gone <laughs> nobody is going to hear you you tell them that if you do not do this remedy, condition first, if you do not do this remedy, you will have difficulty in this time. If you do this remedy, no problem. Not no problem, the problems will reduce. It is not a blind dictum of helplessness. Parashar Muni did not write all, all this too. Because otherwise, what is the need of uh, writing anything in astrology? If everything is, if nothing you can change. It doesn't make sense, right? It's like wasting time because either you know or you don't know, you are anyways going to suffer. But no, remedies and mantras especially can alter it. 
and spiritual practices ultimately they have the effect if anybody is telling you that it doesn't have effect he is lying there are effects i have seen i have seen i have seen and i have experienced and i have felt if somebody is telling you spiritual remedies and mantras do not work <laughs> anyways let them say whatever they want so that is it from my side i wanted to say that be very careful when you do consultations and regarding women it is especially good if you do not speak to them directly if you see there is some serious problem better is if you tell their mother or their father that's best and especially if she is below the age of 35 because till the age of 35 they will be married and they will have kids so they also kind of understand that yes the world is difficult but if somebody is like of the age of 18 and you see that she is going to have a very bad time ahead in marriage or relationship or in career for the next 20 30 years then do not tell that because that will shatter her completely and another problem which occurs is when you tell for example if somebody is going to get married and if you see some problems and if the person has already decided if the couple have already decided that they will marry then please do not give them any consultation i do not do that i refrain from doing that whatever they may ask you how much ever money or dakshina they may give you or they may give me i will not do it because then i have to be biased because if suppose a couple comes and tells me that sir we have decided to get married can you please tell us what astrology says then how will i tell anything suppose i see that they both of them are going to have a separation or a divorce or a very difficult time then how will i tell it because they have already decided to get married so astrology has to be used if you do not know the person or if you have not made a decision if you have already made a decision then better you do not come to astrology because then you will and every couple either it is any kind of a marriage either it is with the person of the same caste or a different caste or a different religion you are going to have challenges so when you see them and you cannot tell then it's like wasting time <laughs> of course if you just want money and you can take thousands of rupees from them and just keep saying them yeah, yeah there will be no problem you can do this you can do that but that's my principle whenever a couple will approach me to do synastry which means taking the chart of both the people together and then trying to see then the first question i will ask them is have you already decided to get married if they tell that no i have not this we have not decided that is why we have come to you then if there are problems then i would tell them that see these these are the issues i feel if you get married these these areas you will face challenges and then ultimately it is up to you to decide i will not say that do not get married or i will also not say that yeah, yeah, yeah you must get married i will not do that that is your responsibility to, to decide you should tell this to the client like this that it is your responsibility to decide should i marry this person even though astrologically the compatibility is matching or the things are good individually in the horoscope that the astrologer cannot decide suppose you get a admission in 10 universities then will you ask the astrologer where should i go and then you tell the astrologer okay wherever you tell i will go and what happens afterwards if he goes and something happens then what so whenever it comes to making decisions the person alone has to make the decision we cannot decide for the person even if the person tells that sir whatever you tell i will just do it blindly my request is stay away from such clients 
because they are only trying to put the responsibility on your shoulder because if you are strong you should have the power to make that decision why do we need an astrologer i am not saying do not go to an astrologer i am saying that if the astrologer has told you that these are the pros and cons if you do this this will happen if you do this that will happen then you as a person should have the strength to decide okay these are the pros and cons what should i do even after knowing all these if you are asking the astrologer again well that means there's a problem you are not stable enough internally to make a decision and then later on you will blame or you will speak badly about the astrologer this astrologer spoiled my life he destroyed my life he or she just because he told i did this and then everything was spoiled because we cannot take responsibility for you it is you who have to take responsibility because at the end you will be responsible the nature will ask you why you did this and then you have to suffer the karma we we will not suffer and yes there is another school of thought here some astrologers i have seen in youtube they become great uh, visionaries of not giving out negative information because they fear that bad karma is going to come to them well if that is the case then probably <laughs> i don't want to say but probably you are not in a very good place because whenever you are dealing with astrology you are already dealing with fire that doesn't mean that you speak out all the negative things there will be a thousand positive things to say but at the same time you have to say things by which they can improve you cannot just simply wish wish what what you say wash out or wish out all the negativity oh nothing is there everything is positive everything is good it's not a psychological consultation for god's sake psychology is different from astrology if you go to a doctor you cannot expect positive things because otherwise you will not be going there so the people who expect sweet things from an astrologer they themselves are having some problem inside when they come and tell to an astrologer that oh astrology is very negative well negative negativity is not there in astrology it is there inside you probably <laughs> because what if the doctor tells you tomorrow that your husband is going to have this blood cancer and he is going to die then you will tell oh medical science is very negative and then one day what you will tell god is very negative you have blamed god only that's it end of it all <laughs> which is terrible actually because that's the hard fact of life that difficult situations come and we have to bear them everybody bears and we will also have to bear them that is why it is important to have connection to the higher power with the higher higher energy with the higher source so that we understand ourselves better and even if there are difficult times we can understand that this is not what is actually happening to me it is just the surroundings which the soul is covered by i as the soul is not getting affected by it but that's a very high stage okay then that is it from my side if you have any questions queries and comments then please let me know in the comment section and if you like this video share it and before ending god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him and maybe probably he will save you from such people who have negativity in their chart and who force you to tell it <laughs> okay that is it from my side wish you good luck in doing consultations and if you want a personal consultation from me now then please message me in whatsapp or email me and i will only give you the predictions after i see the situation of your sun moon and lord of the ascendant without that i will not be giving you 
any prediction okay until next time bye bye see you